second. All right, we are live, yay! Um, and uh, I am here with Carrie Lee, the alchemical artist, and we're just going to um, wait a, a few seconds here to see who, who is going to show up live. But in the meantime, um, I want to welcome those of you who are uh, tuning into this video at whatever time that you tune into it. It's really a pleasure, Carrie, to have you on my um, YouTube and Facebook channels as we were talking, you know, I was telling you we stream into both with uh, StreamYard. And um, I'm really delighted that you're here because because we, we are going to be talking about um, some interesting ways that uh, like you've, you've been uh, enlightened to your own creative process through your design and um, how that has led you into birthing the, uh, how did you say that, the, your, your life's work, your... I, I feel like it's my life's work. I really do. I feel like it's I've hit that point where all the pieces are coming together and I'm creating, which is what I'm supposed to be doing, my life's work with all these beautiful pieces and people who have come through my life. Awesome. Awesome. So for those of you who um, are curious, since we are on my channel where we talk a lot about human design, um, Carrie Lee is actually an emotional manifesting generator. So, uh, you know, we've been talking bits and pieces. We're, we're in a, a, a business networking mastermind group together as well. And we've been talking in bits and pieces after you got your reading about what it means to be an emotional manifesting generator. So I'd love it if you can kind of share some of your insights with people, because I've had some manifesting generators lately who've been asking me questions and yeah. maybe some of your experience can help them. Yeah. I think the biggest ahas that I had were just like an, a better understanding. Well, of course of me, but what I mean specifically by that is that I'm an, an idea person. I'm a creative. That's one of my strengths is I have this endless stream of ideas come. And I would try and respond to them all, right, which is a frantic, hectic, overwhelmed life, which is also part of this design. But what I really have learned is that if I relax into it and I feel my way through my own emotional cycle and learn what that cycle is, then I get great clarity on whether that's something that I can just sort of witness or move on, right? And yeah. I had figured out ways for myself to do that before I found out about my design, but this took it to the next level. Like this just affirmed and gave me so much more depth in terms of like the cycle of it all. And I always felt that my energy moved like the ocean waves. That's how I would describe myself. I was in or I was out. And so nine to five kind of job for me was difficult. I did it for many, many years, but that was not my rhythm. And now I just say, I need to move and act on my inspiration. And mm -hmm. what a better way to live. You know, it doesn't necessarily fit with the norm, but I'm not the norm in that sense. Um, so just to be able to like, self-accept has been huge. Yeah, I think that's the greatest part of uh, learning about your design and, and really starting to integrate some of that deeper understanding about yourself is that 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 uh, that unshakable level of self-acceptance that comes from that. It's so cool. And, you know, I have to say that um, when we were talking about your emotional authority and we were sort of, I was trying to explain the process and, and the way that I explain things sometimes is sort of circular and I eventually get there and you were like, you, you said, oh, the it's when I hit that, I, you know, I had go through those ups and downs and those waves and then I hit that, how'd you say that, that, um, that quiet spot? Yes. Like, and yes, exactly. And you know, I never really considered myself emotional. Like I think I'm one of the most even keeled emotional people I know. I don't have the extremes of anger and super happy. Well, I do. I get pretty giddy, but or sadness. You know what I mean? I don't have those extremes. So I never would have labeled myself emotional. But now that I'm aware of this, I'll wake up and I'll, and you use the word melancholy in one of your um, sessions. And that's perfect because it's just kind of this, just this mist that's around me, right? That makes me into melancholy. And if I can recognize that's a day 
that I need to just slow down and not try and be superwoman, extra productive, all those other things, because that space is where I definitely recharge my batteries and I recharge my ideas and my energy and all of that. And if I don't take it, my health suffers. And honestly, I think I've done that to myself over the years um, because I didn't know that. Now I'm yeah. on the other side and I figured out a lot of health stuff, but we can wear ourselves out. And I think as a manifesting generator, it's probably yeah. really likely. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that I, I use that that description of getting to the quiet spot so much now with clients when they, they have an emotional authority, because that's like when you, you hit that understanding of, oh, I, I wait through, you know, whatever this wave cycle is that you innately felt in your body, yeah. then you realize, oh, my clarity is right there when I get into that quiet place. It is. And for me, that means go to my studio and pick up a paintbrush because then that's really where I get clarity because then it's moving through my body in the way that's appropriate for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think in some ways, you know, it's so funny, um, being midlife, I, I'm like, oh, I wish I knew this when I was younger. But it actually wasn't even, I think, around when I was really young. Yeah, exactly. um, but now, because I know myself the way I do, it's just been so affirming, right? And so it's just, it's just gave me this ease and clarity. I don't know. It's just like there's no traffic on the road, right? The traffic jam's gone. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. And and the, it, there's less of that working against yourself or thinking that you need to work against yourself to, to get to where it is that where your heart desires to go. Yeah. Um, I want to get back to the going in the studio and picking up the paintbrush because okay. because that's really what what um, I want to talk about uh, as we move forward uh, because I'm really excited about your um, your self discovery wisdom school and kind of for self for um, selfish reasons sort of because I get to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> and but I'd love for you to to kind of share with me and and those who who are listening um, and watching uh, what your what your background is. I, I know I'll, I'll I'll tell everyone what how my impression of your background and how it affects me, and then I want you to talk about you. But you know when we first met, um, and some some people who've been if. There are people watching this who've been following for me for a while. They know that I've uh, I suddenly picked up a paintbrush three or four years ago. I haven't really been doing much painting since we moved, but I'm getting back into it. And one of the things that um, that really struck my um, heartstrings was the intentional creativity movement, mm -hmm. and I wanted to participate in that. Um, and perhaps get certified because I'm a projector. So I want to learn everything and I want to get into everything. And then my, my own wisdom told me, you know, you don't have to, as a projector, do everything. So I just sort of let it go. Yeah. And then in you walk and our first meeting was, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in the intentional creativity movement, which I want you to explain a little bit okay. as, as you move in. Okay. Um, and then when you invited me into uh, being a part of your self-discovery wisdom school, I, I realized that um, I kind of realized that it, I really don't have to do everything to be part of that movement. That's right. Is that beautiful to realize that? Yeah, we it don't is. Have to do it all. We can be in the space and share it. And that's what I'm loving about the self-discovery wisdom schools. I'm bringing in you and others to hold your piece of the red thread, as we say, or your piece of the pie. I don't have to do it all either, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so um, tell us a little bit about okay. that your background and uh, because I know it go, your, your um, career or your interest in art has, goes even beyond that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so my interest in art, I was born with it. I was born a creative and an artist. Uh, my first painting was of John F. Kennedy's casket with an American flag on it when I was three. So this is how I expressed and how I witnessed the world, right? But I got messages growing up, whether they were meant to be taken the way I took them or not, that art wasn't really a viable way to be in the world. And so I got what I call a 35-year case of creative constipation, where I could only create by taking classes. So I always had my fingers and was learning technique, which is now paying off. 
but I didn't pursue that as my life. I went into business. I was an entrepreneur. I had a specialty coffee house and micro roastery, and I did all these other things that were typical actually- manifesting generator. <laughs> <laughs> my career path is being prolific <laughs> in your, with your energy. Yes, but they weren't my things. They were they were what other people thought I should do or supporting someone else, right? And that story kind of came to an end when I had a divorce and a loss of the business and a loss of my finances. And at that point, I went, okay, if this is how life is going to be, this was 11 years ago, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to reclaim that artist who I don't even know who she is, but she's going to, she is screaming to come out. Right. So I need to reclaim her. And I want to do something that I feel makes a difference in the world. And shortly after that, I met the founder of intentional creativity, Shiloh Sophia McLeod, and immediately signed up for her certification program to be a teacher. It was a year long program. And so what intentional creativity is, is it's a transformative method of creativity. And typically it's painting or drawing in this case, but it truly can be any expression of creativity with the intention in it, right, that we, mm-hmm. that we do. Um, and actually we're doing that right now. We set intentions before we, we came we on. Did. We did. We are being creative in terms of we are creating something. So this is truly a form of, you are really in, in the intentional creativity. And, and uh, before before we move, that, that brings up a, um, a thought before, before you move forward with that. Those of you who are watching, you can co-create with us by leaving your comments or your questions on whatever platform you're on. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, just leave your comments and questions. And if you have questions, we'll be happy to entertain them. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, please. I would love to you know to hear anything, any thoughts or whatever. Um, okay, so intentional creativity is this transformative method of creativity that anyone can do. It is not about being an artist. I do not teach technique. I guide through a creative process because what that does is that accesses a different part of us, a different part of our subconscious, our imagination, our intuition, our deep inner knowing, our self wisdom, right? And then it goes through like our right brain, our heart, and out our hands onto canvas or paper. And it can be used in many different ways. The different teachers or guides use it in different ways. But for me, because it's my story, I use it to help release blocks, to help heal life's wounds, the tough stuff that we all have to go through, get it out of your body, which is so critical to human design because that's about paying attention to your body, your body, right? And so for me, paying attention to my body was not necessarily my norm. So that's been another aha. Um, but anyhow, so get it, the the blocks out of or the yeah, the blocks out of our body onto canvas or paper where it literally can leave and just go live there, right? And then once you've got this space from the release and the blo- and getting out the wounds, all of a sudden you have the ability to get vision and clarity on what you want instead for the future, for now, for whatever. And so it really spoke to me because it took the things that I cared about in my life experience and being creative with a purpose because I'm a manifesting generator. I kind of need to have a purpose, right? And so I don't... A satisfying purpose. (laughs) purpose. Yeah. So just like my style of art is not to go paint a realistic picture. You can see on the background, that's just not my my way. I think even my art, right, is expressing my design in that sense. Um, So basically, that's what intentional creativity is. And it can be done, if you think about it also, like if you have a garden and you grow your own vegetables and they're organic and you chop them up and you put them in a pot with the right herbs and all that and, and love, you make this soup. You make this amazing soup. And if you open a can and you heat it up, that's a completely different experience of your yes. soup, right? So that's sort of another way to, to look at it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if our viewers are familiar with the red thread. Okay. Uh, do you want to explain that? Well, the reason I I, I want to kind of touch on that is because I just had this insight about how um, I, I did one of Shiloh Sophia's uh, workshops on a you know online uh, for like the new year or whatever several years ago, and she uh, she did the red thread ceremony. And as you were talking about how you got into the intentional creativity movement, I I just had this flash that 
uh, we we are connected. We were connected by the red thread right. before we even met each other. And now you're with this self discovery wisdom school. You're actually creating your own red thread community. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So so to, I mean, I'm talking about it, but if you can kind of explain yeah. what that yeah. is. Yeah. So literally, which I have one behind me and I have one right here, but it's literally a ball of red thread or yarn or whatever, right? But it's it's a symbol. It's a metaphor for something else. And it's used in many different cultures. For example, uh, Native Americans, they have sage that they burn, right? For, for cleansing. They often tie it with red thread. And for them, that's a connection to their ancestors, that smoke and the red thread. Um, soldiers used to wear pieces of red thread on their uniforms that showed that they were peaceful in the communities that they were in. Another symbolism of red thread. Also, some Asian cultures will put um, red thread on baby carriages or even had one of my uh, workshop attendees tell me her mother used to stitch red thread on her underwear every year. <laughs> kind of protection. And I love that. So, but the one that I like to use and that we use within the red thread community typically is an ancient Chinese proverb that says everyone who is destined to meet is connected by an invisible red thread. And that thread may stretch or tangle, but it will never break. And so if you think about that, we go through life and we're weaving, right, this thread around everything that we do. And oftentimes people come into our life and you just feel like you're supposed to know them or you have an old connection or something like that. And it's really true that when you, again, set an intention for the people who resonate to show up, that's a red thread connection. So I use it in my work as a symbol of communication and community, really. So we, we pass around either, either realist, you know, realism where we have it and we hand it to each other or just through the screen, you know, an invisible red thread. And we create a connection and everybody gets to have their piece of the red thread because they're part of the community. And also we all are responsible for our own pieces of the red thread, right? We can't hold everybody else's stuff, right? Whether it's good or bad or whatever, we're responsible for our piece in the bigger picture. I just had this human design insight about that. Okay. We are responsible for our red thread and the more that we are aligned with our true essence, through the and and what what is really the the highest expression of the themes we came to live out through our chart um the the more you know in human design we talk about the g center holding the magnetic monopole the magnetic resonance the more clear clearly that magnetic resonance expresses itself and it keeps you from being tangled up in the red thread. Yeah. It, it, it really keeps the connections clear with, in, in human design speak, with your fractal, with those people that you are destined to meet. Yes. I love it. I love that that connection and that interview. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. I love how, how different cultures and uh, different um, – symbolism and different under th that there's so many different ways to understand how we come together yes. energetically and um even physically even yeah. even as face to face so cool yeah. and if cool. In life as you're wandering about and you notice someone's wearing some red thread typically on their rose rest or somewhere it almost always has meaning to them so it's a super fun question tell me about your your you know red bracelet or your red thread around your wrist and yeah but, you know, it, it could be anything, but it usually has meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 So your red thread has um, uh, uh, taken you into, moved you into, uh, called out of you the creation of the Self-Discovery Wisdom School. It sure has. And Part of it is pandemic related. I've had to have a shift in my business, right? And so that's when all these pieces kind of came together at the, the beginning of the year. And um, I'm, a, I'm a people collector. I am very rich in human capital. Um, I love the people who come into my life. And, oh, I tend and if for the human design people, that's a four, six profile. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a reflection of a four six profile. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what you are. <laughs> I think I'm five one, but I I listen to that too, and I feel like I've got something of that inside of me. For why well, do you five one? Maybe I'm not. I'll have to look. I at don't know. I, you feel yeah. like a four six. We'll have to look at your birth time I'm again. Terrible. I'd be terrible. I don't know. But anyhow. Um, so, and I love, it's really important to me with this whole red thread thing is that everyone gets what they need or desire out of an interaction, right? That it's, it's very circular and that we support each other and we help each other and, you know, it just life works better that way. And so, and I don't need to do it all. And I, even though I could have all these things come, I don't need to do it all just like you were talking about. And so what's happened as I have gone further on my own path of self-discovery and also looked for different ways of um, expressing what I do, which needs to be online now, I came to realize that I've got these people in my life, and Sandy, you're one of them with human design, who have this slice of the pie or this piece of the red thread when integrated with the others, make something incredibly powerful and insightful and fun and connected. Um, and so what I've done is I've called in you, and right now it's two other modalities, I'll call it, and as well as intentional creativity, that each give a different perspective of insight into or self-discovery. And these these different perspectives overlap each other, just like on the edges, yeah. just enough to pass the baton to the next person, right? But yet they all have different aspects that they help discover. And so it's kind of like you can go get an x-ray and you can see yourself with an x-ray or you can go get an MRI and you have sort of this 360 view. And so I've pulled together these different parts that I feel give more like a 360 view. And then it's all rooted in intentional creativity. And so what, what that means is in the self-discovery school, we're a group, but we go off on individual quests right, for the self-discovery. And so people will quest over to you, Sandy, and have their session with you um, for that part of their discovery. And then we'll come back as a group, compare notes, you know, about discoveries about each other, and create a project that is um, going to pull those pieces together visually of what they've learned. Because I'm a, obviously a visual learner as well. So it's just another way to make it experiential and fun. And plus, then you could have this cool visual of that piece. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, uh, once they've got all those different pieces, we will do what I'm calling a mandala map. And we'll create these mandalas that are our individual mandalas. So the the instructions are kind of the same, but we're all different. So they all turn out different. Yeah. And, yeah. And then we'll do a roadmap. A vision book is what I call it. And it's something like this. And it's a um, this is a business plan, but we can do vision books on how to move forward in life. They're super simple. I mean, I use stick figures. Are we here? And they look like so much fun. <laughs> this is my first mandala that I did. That's the mandala map. And, and we address things like limiting beliefs and how to get in touch with your own insight and imagination and intuition right in the beginning so that it sort of centers us before we go off on these quests. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to be really fun to observe about that is uh, where those overlaps are and what each person uh, comes back with from their quest. Yes. Like like when I do a human design reading, a lot of times some the, the person who gets the reading will listen to or watch the, the video of the reading several times, sometimes over the course of years. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and they'll, and, but like the first, the first shot is the snapshot. And then, you know, down the line, they'll get another piece, you know, and down the line, they'll get another piece. But now that we've got like, like several different people with these overlaps, it'll be interesting to see if like they get a snapshot from the human design reading and then they go and they get like a snapshot from the next person. And, and if those snapshots are going to be similar, what it's going to reinforce at yeah. in that moment, um, you know, and, and, you know, how that will evolve over time, how that understanding of their snapshots are going to evolve. Yeah, you're going to love it. So I've been doing this, I've been doing this with my individual coaching clients. And so that's how I know and I how I see the overlap. 
And I guess the best analogy I can say is we're going to make a giant ice cream sundae. I don't know why that came up, but it yeah, did. That and sounds so, delicious. <laughs> so all these different individual quests are different flavors of ice cream. They're all ice cream, but some of them have nuts in them. Some of them have fruit. Some of them might be fruity. Some of them might be sorbet, whatever, right? So they're all different, but they're all similar. And so it really is, they're, they're completely different, but because they're about you, right, about each individual person, that's where the overlap ha happens. And it's also, it's just, they reinforce each other. Like yeah. you, you get enough that you're like, oh my gosh, that's what happened and over there, and that's what happened over there. And actually, that's what I already know about myself as well, because I've been living my personality, right? Um, yeah, it's, I'm so excited and so like honored that I get to hold this container of this self-discovery wisdom school. Yeah. Yeah. And I know when you first started talking about it, it, it seems so, it, it seemed like you were birthing your child. Oh, <laughs> a long pregnancy. That's you're right. waiting and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and all of a sudden it just started to take shape and it gathered this momentum. Wow. Yeah. I you say That's that. Because when we opened the coffee house and the coffee and the micro roastery, it took about two years, which is the gestation time of an elephant, right? Mm. That's what it felt like. It felt like we just instantly had this baby elephant. That, like, how do you deal with a baby elephant? <laughs> I don't know what this equates to, but that'll be interesting for me to figure out. Yeah, to feel through. Long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so who would you say that this, I mean, like there are probably people who are watching or going to watch here in the near future who will say, we'll just uh, kind of intuitively know that yes. oh, I've got to be, you know, I just resonate with that. I, I'm, I want to know more, but who would you say um, from your, your standpoint now uh, yeah. would, would really benefit from the yeah. um, self-discovery wisdom school? Yeah. I'm actually super clear on that. So it is, yeah, it is, which is part of the reason, like, I know, right, that this is what I should be doing because of the clarity. So it's the it's the late high school, let's say early college, transitioning out of mandated schooling into what do I want to do with my future? And whether it's going to college or trade school or who knows what, but maybe just not knowing what direction is the right direction for them. So there's that age group of, wanting to know yourself better, right? But then there's also another 10 years down the road. So let's just say late 20s. Um, and that's when you've been out in the world and you've been doing working, do your thing. And maybe it's not resonating for you. Maybe it just feels like you're just going through the motions. You're on the hamster cage, hamster wheel, whatever. You're not getting fulfillment from the way you have designed your life or agreed to move forward in your life. Those two were both of me, okay? I was an art major that, that decided I wasn't an artist because I couldn't throw a pot for the life of me and I couldn't draw anything realistic. So I got my degree in business, right? So I went off track. Then my late 20s, I went back to school in graphic design. Didn't do it for other reasons, went off track. So then there's, so then it's another way just before life goes too much further, right? Like just do a course correction. This will help with a, a desired course correction. Then there's, let's say, midlife. And a lot of your responsibilities, like children, are able to take care of themselves. Um, you've established yourself in your career. But it's still just there's something really in you that needs to happen to feel fulfilled. That was me as well with this whole artist thing. So that's a good time in life. Because you can still make, you don't have to change your career. That's not what I'm saying. I was kind of crazy in that I completely changed paths. But that's a good time where you can just make, again, some adjustments or do things differently with great clarity. Then there's early retirement. And mm -hmm. you still have a whole life ahead of you. Just because you're retired does not mean you're done, right? Mm -hmm. And, but you maybe you want to leave your legacy or you want to do something super meaningful or you want to feel this ease and this inspiration like you've never felt before. So that's another good time. So yeah. this can serve really any point it, in life. Yeah. And it sounds like what you've identified are, are all of the. The turning 
Are you there? I think I lost this there for a second. Be free to hit something about if the, what I've identified in life is all of the turning, and that's where I love the lost. turning points. Like if we think about it in in astrology terms, like well, other than graduating from high school, um, you know, your Saturn return. Yes. at the end of your 20s into your 30s, yes. uh, your Uranus opposition, where you're really around the age of 40, where you're really looking for that meaning. You've already established yourself in, as an adult. You, you're a master at adulting, hopefully, by then. And, um, and you're looking for something more. Yeah. some more meaning and then um well the chiron the chiron return that happens at 50 is like the blossoming yeah. you know of uh so here i've had all of this life experience now what how do i how do i bring that out into the world and let that flow out into the world into something meaningful and then you know and that's that age 50 60 you know it sort of just it just sort of develops into that yeah. whole I'm, I'm into retirement and now I've got this free time or, or whatever it is. And yeah. what else is there for me? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I see that very clearly. All of those were me. They were all me, which is why I can relate to it. So, because I never felt in alignment with who and what I thought I should be. That's It was just this, this knowing, right? And so I was so driven when my life sort of fell apart. So driven to find that out. Yeah. And now okay. you found it. And it's kind of a fast pass. The self-discovery wisdom school is kind of a fast yeah. pass. You don't have to do as many mountain ranges as I did, you know. <laughs> Can you show that image? Because I, I put that on like the um the thumbnail, that that image of the the mandala again. Yeah. Because as you when when you pulled that up and as we're talking about the process and who this is for, it's like, you know, it, to me, it looks like a compass and you're finding through, through the, the adventure and the journey of self-discovery. It's like, you get this compass <laughs> for that point in your life that sort of emerges from you. That's right. That's exactly yeah. what this is. It's a compass. It's got the, you know, the different, I'll say modalities or, or perspectives of insight and then your personal gems around it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what is your north? Like, what is your personal north? Because those are all different. So that's what you yeah. need to know what direction to head for you. So, yeah, this was yeah. the seed of the self-discovery wisdom school. This was sort of a doodle. I had the I idea, but it was really for a project. It wasn't for a whole school. <laughs> well, that's a project of sorts. <laughs> like one, class, one workshop, you know, like, let's do mandala. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So um, I, I see that we have quite a few people on now. Um, and we've been talking with uh, with Carrie Lee, the uh, alchemical artist. We talked a little bit about her, what it's like for her to be a man, uh, an emotional manifesting generator. And we've also been talking about this uh, awesome um well, it's more than a project. I just said project. This this awesome creation that you're birthing called the Self Discovery Wisdom School, and human design is going to be a part of that. So, uh, you know, and we've been talking about um, creativity and art and all of that. So, if you've been on for a while and you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll address whatever or any comments that you have we'll address those as well um and i guess people kind of need to know uh just for completion's sake here what uh you know where do where do you go to find out more about the self-discovery wisdom school yes um my website is carryleeart.com um it's happening so fast. I don't have a page for the self-discovery wisdom school yet. However, I do have a Facebook group. So that's really the place to head to in this moment, if you're watching it mm -hmm. as a recording. Um, and that's just the self-discovery wisdom school on Facebook. You can just yeah. And I'll, I'll make sure I put, um, put a link with, with wherever this video goes so that people can, can find it easily. Yeah. And I know that, that we're in there now. Some of us are in there. Good. Good, good. And um, yeah, and you're doing a five day challenge as of today, which is what the 20, what's today, the 22nd of August. And the five day challenge starts August 31st. And so if you want to join the challenge, we can put a link for that as well. Yeah. Join yeah. the challenge. Yeah. And the challenge is, uh, you, you outline this and describe this so nicely. The challenge is about finding your magic, meaning, and inspiration. 
yeah. starting August 31st. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and you'll get to, I guess we'll be in there with you. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, Liesl Teversham, uh, that's a strengths master and a confidence coach, and uh, Stephen Henderson, Mayan dream spell transformation coach, and then there's me, who's the human design person, and yeah. and you, Carrie, as the uh, alchemical artist. And yeah. the yeah, so um, so cool. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> we'll be sharing the journey as we go. So um, you know, once the actual first. Um, sessions start, which is September 12th, mm -hmm. we'll be sharing, you know, what's happening within the school. So even if they're not in that first session, they can pop in and see what's going on and what projects are being created and what ahas and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I know from your energy and what you're responding to through your sacral and, and uh, the melancholy cycle that you just came through. <laughs> <laughs> that we've been talking about here and there. Um, I I can just feel how the momentum is sort of building from within you yeah. outward in your auric field to hold this space and to um, really strengthen the the connection, the the so-called red thread connection that we have among us. Yeah, which is yeah. pure joy for me, right? So it's I even said that it this is my life. I get to do this, you know, because that's how it feels. Yeah. That's yeah. Creation is what I love. What's what was the word? Layered creation and really layered experiential interactive creation is my favorite thing. More than painting. It's creating a a living thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And creating and co-creating co with all, sure. all of these energies that you're you're bringing in and, and um, in a certain way, supporting with your manifesting generator aura. Yeah. Yeah. Delphine says, um, love the red thread symbolism. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Powerful. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you have anything else you want to want to share? I don't. I think that just, you know, pay attention to how your body felt while you were watching this, mm -hmm. right? If your energy started rising up and that, that to me means something. Mm -hmm. And this is before I knew my design and other things. And if you're feeling like, ah, oh, that seems exhausting. Maybe not the right fit. Maybe not the right fit or not the right time. And yeah. I love how you're doing like a five day challenge. And this is just like a little, little business thing on the, you know, a little human design business thing on the side here for, for anyone who's interested in that, you know, because half the population has that emotional authority or has some kind of a, a way of knowing what's right for them that takes time. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like, you know, you get five days to kind of feel it out, to kind of respond if you're a generator or manifesting generator, to yeah. feel into the, into the strength of the invitation if you're, um, if you're a projector. And yeah, so I love, I love how you set this up where it's kind of like, come on in with your, with your attractive and um, enveloping aura, come on in and let's experience this. And yeah. um, you get, you get to take your time to feel the energy and feel into your body exactly and every day we're going to sort of focus on a different aspect i'll call it and this isn't ex exactly a prototype but we're going to create inspiration intention and inspiration flags something like this oh wow we're going to be creating and each day we'll make a different piece of the flag that will have a different aspect of the participant yay yeah. all right <laughs> pantry art you can pretty much do it with whatever you have on hand yeah, so so that was my next question do we have to go out and get art supplies or um Maybe not okay yeah, all probably. right some heavy duty paper and whatever you have on hand will work excellent excellent yeah, yeah so it's it's accessible to everyone it is yeah great great well um i'm feeling complete how about you i am too yep
Yay! <laughs> well, I want to thank all of you who have come on, all of you who are watching. Um, you know, on my screen, there's like a little eyeball and I can see how many and, and the likes and the loves. And thank you so much for um, for your support. Um, yeah, Carmen and Gail and um, I can't see who else is there, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Delphine, thank you for your, your comment. And um, I'll be sure to put uh, Carrie Lee's information and the information about the Self-Discovery Wisdom School in the comments, um, at, uh, wherever this video is. So feel free to, to come over and, and check out, check out the uh, five-day challenge or check out the program or contact Carrie Lee and, um, you know, maybe just even follow her for a while. She's a pretty cool person to be around. So, oh, thank you. yeah, <laughs> okay, at an eavesdrop if that's what you want to do. That's yeah, fine. there you go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Carrie Lee. And until the next time, please be well and take very good care of yourselves. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>